We make passage whenever we have an opportunity with good wind to get to a new destination or to revisit uh, a favorite spot from a previous trip. Every crossing is completely different and that's one of the things that's exciting about it. It gives us a chance to fish for pelagics. It's a big part of putting food in our freezer, uh, which we uh, really enjoy out here. It's getting um, fresh fish and being able to survive off that for weeks at a time sometime. Oh, baby! We both do that with line fishing and with spear fishing. On this uh, particular crossing, we had Matt on board. Matt's uh, a legend, good friend um, of ours that is a professional captain by trade, but uh, decided to join our adventure as kind of a, a captain slash guide slash partner in crime. He's always got his eye out for uh, something that he can catch or something that he can shoot or something that he can surf. We're uh, a couple hours out from our destination and Matt, uh, with his eyes on the horizon, up at the captain's chair, spotted what we determined to be a FAD, which is a fish aggregation device. We knew that they are in the area, but you never can tell exactly where they're gonna be. So once we got eyes on this one, we got, we got pretty excited. So I jumped in first um, and had a look and instantaneously knew that there was some action. You know, I was kind of trying to tell myself to calm down and, and take a moment, but you also don't want to wait too long because everything can disappear, and went after a mahi. This whole region is pretty remote. The stores up here are pretty few and far between, and so it's nice every time we're moving between the atolls, that's one of our chances to secure food. That mahi-mahi that we caught was the first we had had in a while. So after being at anchor for a few days and knowing that that fad was so close, we wanted to go try our luck again for another mahi-mahi. Every time we get in the water, we see something different. And that's one of the exciting things about it. You know, it's a completely different world and it's not our home. There could be anything down there. And that vulnerability is uh, pretty exciting. I'm gonna go take a little peek, sniff around with some uh... Pelagics. Okay, everybody be real safe. Keep our eyes around our partners all the time. Shoot something big. We kind of had a little, you know, last minute pep talk and uh, yeah, into the, into the big blue. Um, I think the depth is around 3,000 feet here, so, you know, there's no bottom. First thing I saw when I went in after that entry was a pretty decent sized uh, shark. Big shark. That was the first time being in the water with the oceanic white tips. I was maybe a little nervous, but I'd say nervous excited. You know, the, both of the guys had spear guns and all I had was a camera, so I'm relying on them watching my back. But the fact that there were three of us, we started all back to back underneath the dinghy, you know, kind of all facing out different directions, just kind of waiting to see what they would do. And it was really cool being in the water with them. These animals are, they're really impressive. They're a host for so many other small fish as well, you know, so you've got all kinds of pilot fish and symbiotic relations that are happening. Um, and then you'll find that like schools of tuna will kind of follow in some of these big guys and, and the mahi will play their game, well, they'll, they'll stay behind them. So it's not just the animal itself, but everything around it that, that it's, it's kind of part of. It's really neat. What we were seeing was, you know, a pretty calm um, curiosity, I think. You know, of course, the fish are, the shark's going to be curious. Um, we didn't see anything that really alarmed us. From what I've read up historically, you know, like when there's uh, ships sinking at sea or aircraft that go down, typically it's the white tip that will be roaming the ocean. Those are the guys that would be on the scene. Um, so they do have a reputation for, you know, being a man-eater, although these days it's, it's very, very rare that in the past, I think that's a historical note. The sad thing about the sharks, which I found out, is that their, uh, their population's been cut, you know, like 94% in the past, like, 15 years due to um, shark finning. They have huge fins. Um, that's one of the telltale signs of an oceanic white tip. When you look at its pectoral fins, they're, they're massive in length and size. And so they're typically a bycatch from, you know, long liners and uh, people that are fishing for tuna and, and anything out in the blue water. And, um, and now, because they were pretty common sharks, they've gone from a bycatch to a targeted species for the shark finning. 
so actually, you know, you go from this, you know, man-eating shark to something that's probably getting pretty rare. And, you know, people can paint these pictures of these animals and what they are, but when they disappear, you know, we don't have any more. How does that affect the experience that we had the other day? Like, if there's no sharks, maybe there's no ecosystem in that particular location because they're such an important part of it. You know, with the sharks around us, we obviously weren't going to shoot anything. But even just watching everything was a gift in itself, being able to be underwater and witness all of this life around us. We had um, this, you know, kind of a waiting game with the sharks. So eventually they kind of disappeared and that's when we decided we could approach uh, making some shots at the mahi that were in the region. Matt was the first one to line up a good shot and he took it and hit a nice sized fish. These are strong fish and, and they definitely don't go down without a fight. During the course of this battle, I realized there was, there was a chance that this fish was going to tear out. So my, my move then became um, to be in a position where hopefully if that happened, I'd be able to get a shot. Uh, sure enough, it did. I was just lucky that it came across in my direction rather than the other one, but we were able to get another shot at it. And um, that was a more of a holding shot. It was a really good sized fish. Definitely something that I uh, was proud to send pictures to dad and, and uh, my brother back home. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, I it was like... The whole experience was pretty surreal. Being out there with so many different species of animals in the water and it was just more action than we could have hoped for. Um, even if we hadn't caught a fish, I would have been so happy that day just watching the wildlife that was under there. Living on this boat, we find ourselves in situations like that more often than not, and that's one of my favorite parts about it. Every place we are, it's you know different when we jump in the water, and there's always something exciting or something changing, and nature has its cycles, and we're just here in the middle of it. Very, very rare to find people that actually free dive for lobster. They've got a totally different technique. He let us down a trail out to the reef and as soon as we got out to the reef he took off. Carl is a pro, he's just darting left and right. I had a little difficulty <laughs> trying to pin down the lobsters. I'm so used to being underwater and spotting these guys but in the tidal zone that was pretty challenging. Got one on the move. This one won't hold still. 